on August 15th, uh, 1977, there was a very famous uh, uh, flare in the radio, radio signal, that was given the name the WOW signal because the observers that recorded it at Ohio State uh, University um, was uh, stunned at, at, at how powerful this signal was. And I checked it, turns out that it uh, came from about the same direction in the sky as 3i Atlas. Nine lights swung into a tight escort around a traveler many call 3i Atlas, and the geometry looked deliberate. Their arc cut through lanes that intersect Mars's path, lining up with capture windows navigators actually use. That isn't sci-fi. Ballistic capture to Mars has been studied since the 1990s. Belbruno's weak stability routes, and aerobraking is standard for Mars orbiters like MRO and TGO. If a small correction burns at the right node, three objects can ride a low-energy loop and descend. If they skip braking, a kinetic hit becomes surgical. Which rattles you more, controlled landings or precision impacts timed to Mars's 687-day rhythm? A reality check keeps this grounded. We've logged two interstellar visitors already, one I Umuamua and two I Borisov. Umuamua showed a puzzling non-gravitational push, while Borisov behaved more like a classic comet with pristine ices. Unusual behavior is on the table, so if a third outsider brings companions threading Martian rails, isn't Mars the obvious testbed? And if Mars is step one, which world becomes step two? Early chatter coalesced into a theme. This doesn't fly like fluff and sunlight. Real comets vent erratically. These nodes look tuned. Greenish emission is a known phenomenon. Diatomic carbon and CN often glow emerald, as seen in C-2022E3, ZTF. But when nine bodies show tightly clustered brightness curves and timing that feels scripted, the pattern points to control. If you wanted quiet steering toward Mars, you'd bury the thrust inside, not advertise with messy jets. Does hidden propulsion explain the formation better than chaos ever could? Perspective helps. A single power plant on Earth delivers about a gigawatt. The internet tossed around tens of gigawatts per node, which sounds wild, yet we've already watched space misbehave gracefully. Umuamua's gentle push lacked dust signatures we could see. Explanations ranged from exotic outgassing to ultra-low density geometry reflecting sunlight. If nature can produce non-intuitive propulsion once, what stops it from doing it again, maybe stronger? And if stronger, how hard is it to quietly tilt for the red planet? Two narratives now duel. One reads, Carrier plus Scouts, a concept Avi Loeb actually entertained in 2023, an interstellar mothership shedding probes inside our system. The other leans on brutal fragmentation, which is real, Comet 73P slash Schwassman Walkman 3 broke into dozens, and Shoemaker Levy 9 split into a train that slammed Jupiter in 1994. Space can make strings of fragments, but can it script a formation this precise? Here's the pinch point. Debris spreads, spins, and varies. Coordination looks like choreography. Identical tracks, matching emissions, and clean timing feel less accidental and more intentional. If this is equipment, Mars becomes a workshop, not a waypoint. Thin air, low gravity approximately 38% of Earth's, and a quiet surface offer perfect staging. Given that, where would you send the first trio? Jezero's Deltas, Gale's Clays, or an unmapped anomaly MRO's Chrism hinted at? While the formation tightened, another inbound raised the stakes from the opposite side. Bright, massive, unmistakable. People nicknamed it Swan R2, and the tag fits. The SOHO Swan instrument has flagged comets before, e.g. C-2020 F8 Swan. The timing looks like a near-simultaneous brush with the sun as the three eye cluster loops inward. Two outsiders converging in the same window feels less like luck and more like choreography. If both pass the furnace together, what gets exchanged there that can't be traded elsewhere? 
The sun is a perfect rendezvous. Solar radiation pressure, plasma density, and magnetic fields spike near perihelion. That's where sails thrive. JAXA's Icaros proved solar sailing in 2010, and Light Sail 2 followed in 2019. A calibration pulse, a data handoff, even a coordinated nudge on the heliospheric current sheet becomes efficient at that node. If two players can save energy by meeting in the same slot, wouldn't they reuse that slot every cycle? Pattern hunters surfaced an eerie cadence in old records, roughly a 2,200-year beat in chronicles of dramatic sky visitors. The facts are solid. Chinese astronomers logged broom stars for millennia. Babylonian astronomical diaries note bright comets. Medieval Europeans described a green banner cutting the dark. Halley's Comet alone has secure sightings back to 240 BCE. If history captures repeating celestial drama, what modern pattern are we standing inside right now? Treat the sky like a timetable and the mood flips. Roots recur, checkpoints return. Mars shifts from target to station. If a civilization cycles through on a long arc, it would reuse the same windows so nothing is missed. What would you stash on a world you're guaranteed to revisit? Sensor masts, isotope caches, or a dormant device keyed to a specific solar cycle? Not all breadcrumbs are visual. On August 15, 1977, Ohio State's Big Ear Radio Telescope caught a narrow band spike at the hydrogen line, approximately 1420 megahertz, exactly where technologists expect a we're here ping. Volunteer astronomer Jerry Eman circled the intensity printout 6EQUJ5 and scribbled one word, wow. The signal lasted 72 seconds, came from the direction of Sagittarius, and never repeated despite extensive follow-ups. Doesn't a one-time hydrogen line whisper sound like someone testing our attention? Explanations surfaced, most famously, a 2017 idea that hydrogen clouds near comets 266P Christensen or 335P Gibbs caused it. But SETI veterans pushed back, noting the frequency sits in a protected band and the comet scenario doesn't fit all constraints. Here's why it matters now. If nine nodes are machines, perihelion is the perfect moment to slip a narrow band ping onto the hydrogen line again, piggybacking on a natural noise peak. If a modern wow repeats during the Mars window, would that end the debate for you? Mars is a technician's dream. Surface pressure averages approximately 0.6% of Earth's, thin enough for efficient aerobraking. NASA has used it repeatedly. Mars Global Surveyor and MRO-shaped orbits by surfing the air. Gravity is gentle for landing. Dust preserves hardware. And MAVEN's maps of upper atmosphere escape give precise density models for entry. If you needed a quiet bench for assembly or extraction, could you pick better than this red lab? Entry profiles are straightforward. Ride lift, shed speed, and slip into low energy capture. Impacts are simpler and leave clean data. Fresh craters are routinely spotted by MRO's high-rise and CTX and Insight's seismometer before it fell. Silent in 2022 recorded genuine meteor strikes. So if three units peel off, would you expect soft arrivals over hydrated minerals or kinetic hits on magnetic anomalies in Terra Serenum and Samaria? Which outcome gets answers faster? The blink might not be birth. It might be a curtain lift. A compact, cool object can lurk near invisible for months. Cross a threshold, solar flux, magnetic boundary, proximity rule, and hidden lattices unfold. We know this play. Icaros unfurled a 14-meter sail, and Light Sail 2 changed orbit just with sunlight. Unfolding changes area, heat balance, and reflectivity. Suddenly, instruments wake up. Isn't that exactly how you'd design a traveler that stays quiet until it matters? Now stitch in Mars. Cruise dimension. Reveal briefly in the inner system to confirm formation. Dim again. Bloom a second time on approach when aerothermal glow and venting can mask deliberate maneuvers. That sequence leaves breadcrumbs only careful watchers catch. If that's the playbook, how many reveals have slipped past while we weren't looking? If this is coordinated, rhythm will betray it. Look for synchronized pulses in tail brightness across the formation and the big inbound object, shared green to blue shifts, 
pointing to CO heavy ion emission, like the unusual CO dominance in C-2016 R2 panstars, and timed flares aligned with Mars approach windows. Hubble, JWST, VLT, and Keck can all fingerprint gases with spectroscopy. Would a shared cadence across multiple instruments convince you faster than any press release? On Earth, crumbs show up when the sun flexes. In May 2024, a severe geomagnetic storm pushed auroras to low latitudes and sent KP to 9, nudging grids and radio. If nine nodes are whispering in the solar wind, tiny modulations could ride those currents. On Mars, expect dust plumes that resemble controlled descents, orbital elements tightening beyond meteor physics, and maybe, just maybe, a narrowband radio tick near 1420 megahertz that echoes 1977. If you heard that while three objects drop into Martian rails, what else would you need? Three motives fit the evidence and the physics. Survey. Autonomous scouts sniff fields, gases, and potential biosignatures, then relay to a larger body at perihelion. Harvest. Skim charged particles, crack regolith for rare isotopes, and bank energy when solar flux peaks. Nature can fool us with order. Fragment chains happen. Shoemaker Levy 9. Green comas are common. C2 glow. Non-gravitational accelerations exist, umuamua, but combine two interstellar class visitors in the same window, nine lookalikes flying like they rehearsed, and trajectories threading Martian capture lines, and you get a pattern textbooks won't dismiss overnight. If this is nature, isn't it nature flexing at the edge of our models? A tight escort around a rumored interstellar traveler, a second giant cutting in from the dark, a cadence whispered through centuries, a modern one-time radio ping at 1420 megahertz that still haunts SETI, and now trajectories that light up Mars like runway guides only pros usually notice. Two interstellar visitors are in our records. Green glows have known chemistry. Aero braking and weak stability capture are real flight tricks. The wow signal proves a single surgical transmission can jolt the world. Stack those facts under this pattern and the Mars move looks less like fantasy and more like timing. Which storyline fits all of that in your head right now? Here's what I'm watching next. A synchronized flare shared by both visitors within hours, a chemistry flip toward CO heavy ions at the same moment, and a decisive turn that sends three units onto Martian rails, ideally with a narrowband tick near 1420 megahertz riding the peak. If even two of those hit, the debate collapses. So tell me, are we about to witness controlled landings, surgical strikes, or both on the red planet? What's the first hard sign you'll be tracking when the window opens? If you want the follow-up the moment it breaks, lock in, because the sky's on a clock and Mars looks like the next page.